and bona yesu asifiwe my name is valentine mereti i am born again a daughter in the kingdom and in the young professional network that is the youth network and today um this morning we'll be learning about the return of our purposes to god a theme verse for the day for this week or for this year has been jeremiah 2 verse 2 which says go and shout this message to Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. I remember how eager you were to please me as a young bride long ago. How you loved me and followed me even through the barren wilderness. And he's, God is just calling us back to himself in the same way. He's also asking us to bring our purposes, our plans um, to him. And in Psalms 138 verse 8, which says, The Lord will work out his plans for my life. Um, for your faithful love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon me, for you made me. This psalm by David, in full confidence, he utters his personal confidence in God. And he also um, utters or asks God to help him and also preserve him. And um, from this verse, we are going to pick just a few, uh, five points that we're going to be talking about today on how to return our purposes back to him, or rather, what exactly does it mean for us, for God giving us our purposes? Um, number one, one of the things that I learned is that it is God's purpose and not ours. It is his own purpose and not mine. And that Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans that I have for you, um, says the lord the plans for good and not for evil for plans for prosperity for your life remember he says that for i know it is god who knows the plans that he has for you it is not for evil it is for good it is for a, pl a, a beautiful purpose or rather success that he has in store for you and um as also um David says in the book of Psalms 139 from verse 1 to 18, I'll just pick a few points that I picked on from the whole, um, the, the verses. Number one, he says that he needs us, God needs us together in our mother's womb. Then he says that God knew us before we were born. Then he says that um, every day of our life is recorded in his book and every moment was laid out before it had passed. And then he ends up by saying this very beautifully. He says that his thoughts, or rather God's thoughts for you and I are so precious, they cannot be counted, they cannot be outnumbered, um, they cannot outnumber uh, the grains of the sands. Um, and that's, that's just beautiful. In other words, God is telling us that his, it is his purpose for us and the thoughts that he has for each and every one of us is very, very beautiful. It is for success, a great future that is in him. Remember, it is his purpose and not our own. Number two is that God fulfills his purpose, not us. It is him who fulfills these purposes. So one, it is his purpose. Two, it, has, it is him who fulfills it. There is nothing we can do to measure up to how he fulfills his purpose. It is him who fulfills the purpose that he has given us. David says in Psalm 57 verse 2 that I cry out to God most high, um, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. So he cries out to God the most high who fulfills his purpose for us, for me and for you. In Psalms 139 verse 16, David also says that he knows that God knows our lives and that every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. So God is intimately involved with our purposes every single day. Imagine our days were laid out <laughs> before every moment was passed. Like to, tomorrow is, is already laid out before him. It's written in his great book before it even comes to pass. Um, number three is that everything is for his glory. So the purpose is his. Um, he fulfills it. And when he fulfills it, he fulfills it for his glory. Ephesians 1, 11, 12 says, In him we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works in all things according to the counsel of his will that we who first trusted in christ should be to the praise of his glory 
Number four, the other point that I'll, I'd like us to learn today is, or rather this morning, is that he will finish exactly that which he started. Philippians 2.13 says, uh, For it is God who works both in us to will and to do for his good pleasure. Uh, Philippians 1.6 says, Being confident of everything, that he who has begun a good work in us will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. God enables us to say yes to him and he works. He is very intentional to work with us from the day that we begin to say yes to him. He is intentional about our lives and so is he is also intentional about our purposes in him. Number five is nothing can stop his purpose for your life. I'm reminded of Romans 38 and, th 8, 38 and 39, which says nothing can separate you from the love of God, or rather nothing can separate you from the masses that he has for each and every one of us. There's nothing that can separate us from him. So nothing can stop his purpose in our lives. So David makes a prayer. And as he's making a prayer in the verse that we just read, uh, Psalms 138, verse 8, he says, at the end, he says, do not forsake the work of your hands. For He's not like, he's praying, yes, but he's so confident. He knows that God will not forsake his work. So he tells God, do not forsake the work of your hand. And he, he, rule, he, he says it out of knowing fully well that God will not do it. Will, he will not separate him or rather leave him to work uh, the purpose that he has for him all by himself. Psalms 100 verse 5 says, God is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth uh, endures forever to all generations. So it is, he will work out these plans. He will not stop it. He will do it day by day. Our, t our, our purposes in him will be day by day. He works out in us. The fact that you wake up in the morning, brush your teeth make your bed, take your cup of tea, have your lunch, or go to work in the morning, come back in the evening, every single thing. He's not about how you just spend your day in a nutshell. He's about how you spend your day in detail. It is in detail. You, we might be surprised. And it is, it's the same thing. He just does it because he, that's how much he loves us. We don't have anyone who's closer than him. The Bible says, says that he is closer than a brother. So imagine he's just that closer to us. Um, and all we have to do is surrender our purposes to him and give them back to him. According to Psalms 94 verse 14 says, God will not reject his people and he will never forsake his inheritance. You and I are his in inheritance and he will never forsake us and as i conclude i'm reminded of the book of matthew 14 um from verse 22 all the way to 31 this is a story of jesus walking on water and as jesus was coming towards them because he had sent them away and he took some time to just pray and towards the evening already uh the disciples had already um gone farther from the shore so he was walking towards them on water and they couldn't tell who it was so they asked peter asked jesus if it is really you then allow me walk on water then god said yeah sure come he first he actually commanded come and peter began walking on water but by the time he saw the storms on his left and on, on his right by the time he realized there was a strong wind he began sinking at that time that he realized that, you know, there's a strong wind that is coming forth, he began sinking. And so he shouted to God, Lord, save me. And I think it's the same thing that we are doing to him. We are shouting back to him. We are telling him, save me. And him in return, he is stretching his hands towards us and he's telling us, come. In other words, this morning, what I'd love to tell us is God is telling us, bring your purposes to me. Submit your plans to me and I will accomplish them to the very end. I am detailed from when you wake up in the morning to when you go back to sleep. I am that detailed about you. I am that detailed about your purpose. I am the one who's going to fulfill that purpose for you. Remember, I wrote it. It is in my books. What you're doing is just fulfilling what I wrote in my books. 
So there is no better person that we can have to surrender our purposes to, to surrender our lives to every single detail of our purposes rather than God, shall we pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, Jehovah, dear God, for the lesson that you've taught us today, King of all the glory, that we should surrender our purposes to you, that it is you who it is you who gives us these purposes. You fulfill them, Jehovah, dear God. You never stop doing, you never stop working in us, my Redeemer and my Father. And when you do it, you do it for the glory and honor of your name. I pray, dear Father, that even as we surrender our purposes to you, dear King of all the glory, for us who thought that we will be working it out on our own, dear God, I ask that you may forgive us, my Redeemer and my Father. And I pray that from this day forward Jehovah dear God that we will surrender it back to you Jehovah dear God and partner with you even in the day to day life that we are living today king of all the glory because at the end of the day it ends up to our purpose you sum it all up to our purposes king of all kings we love you we glorify you and we bless your holy name in Jesus name we do pray and believe amen <laughs>